Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan and I'm great at hindsight. Which is why I've decided to start a new series that will look at a variety of different battles that have happened in Star Wars and discuss the best methods of surviving them. After all, the Star Wars saga is epically full of death and it would almost be a waste for us not to learn anything from all of their tragic ends. We'll be starting off with one of the lesser known stories within the Star Wars galaxy, the Battle of Mimban. Just a reminder before we start, this video is not about being a hero or even being honorable. This is a video about being practical and preserving one's life above all else, even if it means being a coward. Because we care about all you troopers out there, we don't really want any heroes. Leave that up to the guys with the plot armor. Now we'll be breaking this video down into different segments. First, we'll be looking at the history and culture of the enemy you're facing. We should all be inspired by individuals like Thrawn who are able to make tactical assumptions about an enemy based on studying their history and culture. Then we'll continue on by analyzing the enemy combatant's fighting abilities, which will then lead to the type of equipment or training you should bring with you, followed by the best path to survival. In the decades following the Separatist defeat by the Republic during the Clone Wars, the Galactic Republic transitioned into the Galactic Empire. While most of the Separatist holdouts had been destroyed by 10 BBY, after destroying the Separatist threats on many of these worlds, the Clone Army turned from a liberation force into an occupying one. Most planets just didn't have planetary defense forces strong enough to resist the Empire, while other planets didn't have the will to start another war soon after the last war had just ended but some individuals refused to capitulate to Imperial rule. Like the Wookiees on Kashyyyk, the Twi'lek resistance on Ryloth, Admiral Radice's fleet on Mon Cala, and the strange swamp people of Mimbam. Officially known as Sekarpus V, Mimbam was located in the expansion region of the galaxy. The expansion region was actually very similar to the Outer Rim during the time between the Rusan Reformation and prior to the Clone Wars. The expansion region was in a sector of space lying in between the Inner Rim and the Mid Rim. During the Galactic Republic's Great Manifest period, 2000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the expansion region was actually at the outer edge of the known Galactic Republic. Most of the worlds in this area were still underdeveloped, impoverished, and primitive, but usually mineral and resource rich and ready to be exploited. The Galactic Republic, which is permanently cash strapped, depended on corporations to build the infrastructure in this region of space in return for generous subsidies and tax breaks. And so, Corellian, Duros, and Nemoidian corporations led the Republic's expansion into this region. Circapus V was not one of these planets. Mimbam was deemed to be too wild and difficult and dangerous to actually settle on. Although, eventually, surveyors were able to detect a massive amount of hyperbarite deposits hidden beneath the surface. This was a type of super heavy element that was extremely rare through the galaxy. It could withstand high temperatures, radiation, and flux densities, and most commonly was used in turbolasers. At 2,200 credits per kilogram, it was very profitable to mine even the smallest deposits of hyperbaride. All of a sudden, Mimbam became a target. The discovery of hyperbaride on Mimbam doomed the planet to constant conflict. The Mimbanese were a relatively primitive subterranean species. They were, however, sentient and very well adapted to their home world. They were experts at concealment and stealth and were also rumored to have infrared vision, which allowed them to track enemies through the thick fog that continuously swirled around the surface of the planet. The Mimbanese proved to be a huge headache for mining corporations. And when the Separatist Alliance invaded the planet, the Mimbanese organized themselves into the Mimbanese Liberation Army. The Mimbanese were excellent at guerrilla warfare, and they quickly learned how to use captured enemy weapons, making them all that more dangerous. By the time the Separatist threat was destroyed by the combined Republic and Mimbanese forces on the planets, the Mimbanese Liberation Army had become quite familiar with modern military tactics. When the Republic turned into the Empire and then turned on the Mimbanese, the Mimbanese Liberation Army was more than ready to fight them off. In extreme environments, the equipment you bring is extremely important. Forget all those fools who say equipment doesn't matter, all you need is your brain and natural ability and skills. Humans are hilariously under-equipped, naturally, to handle the harsh extremes in our galaxy. If you are using your brain, you'll arm yourself with every tool and training available to survive in these types of situations. And although a swampy environment might seem less dangerous than, say, an ice planet like Hoth or a lava planet like Mustafar, 
It does present its own challenges. Mimbum, for one, is a very humid and wet planet. Humans have relatively fragile and weak skin, and keeping skin dry is extremely important. Maladies like trench foot exist no matter what planet you're on, and it's the result of continuous immersion of one's feet in water, which eventually leads to your skin breaking apart and then falling off, which of course then leads to infection. Trench foot is a part of a wider range of ailments that can happen to any part of your skin, but most commonly your feet and in trenches, which are usually dug below the waterline. In World War I, an estimated 75,000 British soldiers and 2,000 American soldiers died from trench foot. That's right, not wounded, but actually died. So it doesn't really matter what you have on your feet, whether it's a leather, PVC, Gore-Tex, or some other kind of fancy material. On a muddy world like Mimbum, your feet will get wet, and it's important to let them dry off when Whenever possible. So I recommend you guys carry some baby powder with you at all times for your feet, along with extra pairs of dry socks. I know, right? This is not what you expected when you came into this video, but you know, if you don't have feet, you're not really gonna get anywhere. And it's not just your feet you'll have to worry about. All sorts of diseases and illness can be found at the bottom of a wet pit, which a trench basically is. Next up is headgear and armor. Make sure it's light, but well insulated and also very waterproof. Not only is Mimbum a very wet planet, it's also a planet of extreme temperatures. During the day, it might be quite warm, especially when you're engaged in a firefight, but at night, it can dip below freezing. And if your body is wet and you're not well insulated, you can very much get sick or even die. Make sure the armor you're wearing is not bulky or heavy. Moving in the mud is hard enough without the additional weight. I would also recommend you ask the quartermaster for a set of scout trooper armor or some other type of armor that can mask heat signatures. The enemy already knows the terrain better than you and they can see in the infrared spectrum, so you might as well try to mask yourself at least a little bit. Your helmet unfortunately will need to be airtight and have a rebreather or at least a filter because of the toxic gas in parts of the planet. Perhaps one of the most important pieces of advice is make sure your goggles are sprayed with anti-fog solution. The last thing you want is a foggy helmet in the middle of a battle in a toxic area of the planet. For those of you who have ridden a motorcycle in the rain with a foggy helmet, you know exactly how terrible that can be. I also recommend you guys find some infrared goggles for yourselves. The Mimonese love rolling around in the mud and sometimes will bury themselves in the ground before ambushing a patrol. Also, I recommend you guys carefully select what kind of weapons you bring into battle. While blasters are the most efficient type of weapons, battery packs and complicated electronics and blasters might not be the best choice for such a wet environment. The E11 is actually a pretty decent blaster, small in size and with a variety of fire modes that compensated for different environments. It was also vacuum rated and had corrosion proof parts, although it isn't completely sealed from the environments. On a planet like Mimbom, if you are using a blaster, I would recommend cleaning and field stripping your weapon on a daily basis. It might even be a good idea to carry a backup slug thrower just in case. They typically don't have electronics in them and perform much better in the mud. They can jam, of course, but they're relatively easy to fix. Slug throwers also tend to give off a much smaller heat signature than blasters do, and also the rounds would be almost undetectable in Mimbom's foggy environments. Also carry a healthy amount of detonators and smoke grenades with you. Indirect fire can save your life, and smoke grenades can help you break off contact. So I really have to stress once again how important it is to keep your body and your equipment healthy and clean while engaging in trench warfare. As bloody as the fighting was during World War I, a large percentage of the casualties were caused by non-combat related illness and disease. In trench warfare, the trench you dig is your best friend. It's also important to keep it very clean, well maintained and dry if possible, and deep enough so that you can walk around without hunching over. Never create any silhouettes against the open sky when you're engaged in trench warfare. It's because everyone's lying around waiting to shoot each other in fortified positions. Even if an enemy Milanese sniper doesn't find you, their artillery now knows where your trenches are and that they are occupied. Make sure that you keep chatter at a minimum within your own trench. Keep your ears open for any sounds because visuals will be limited and oftentimes you'll hear someone coming before you'll actually see them. Never charge into no man's land during the day. And even under the cover of fog or darkness or at the end of an officer's pistol, it's just not recommended. I advise you find a way out of it. But if you are forced to take a part in a massive suicidal charge, there are some things you can do to limit your chances of dying. 
If you are a freshly arrived stormtrooper to the front and equipped with the standard white armor, you get rid of it. Find some camouflage armor or at least some gray army trooper armor. There's no pride in having clean armor if it tracks blaster fire to you like a lighthouse in a storm. Next, forget everything I said about staying clean, roll around in the mud and cover yourself in a thick layer of that stuff. Not only will it camouflage you, but it'll also cool down your surface temperature and make it harder for people with infrared vision to actually see you. Also, never be the first man in the charge. You will trigger a machine gun nest or end up accidentally clearing some landmines. If you do find yourselves forced to beat the front of a charge because of bad luck, trip and fall. Mud is hard to run in. That or just don't run fast. Pretend to run fast, but don't actually run fast. Ideally, find cover in the first bombed out crater or tank trap that you see. Now, if you're hiding in cover and you're able to see other troops around you with a similar mindset, be a leader and inspire them to retreat with you. You'll be a lot safer in a group and hopefully all of the commission officers were morons and led the charge from the front and have gotten themselves blown up already. And if there is an officer waiting back at your trench with a heavy repeating blaster crew pointed at you, traitors, remember, you're a stormtrooper, named after the shock troops of World War I trench warfare. Take cover and overwhelm fortified enemies with a healthy amount of detonators and concussion grenades. And then make sure everyone in your group has their story straight. You got turned around in the fog and were fired upon by a heavy blaster and thought you were attacking an enemy trench. Your best chance of survival honestly is to not be in the front lines at all. Getting a job in the headquarters unit or logistics unit is a far better choice. Although avoid being a runner. Being a part of an artillery battery is also not a bad idea, although counterfire could be potentially dangerous. I would also avoid mechanized vehicles and walkers as well. They typically stand out too much and they get bogged down in heavy mud. You're also gonna be expected to lead charges from the front. And as they say, the best armor is not actually armor, but to not get shot at in the first place. Ultimately, I would like to remind the viewer that the Battle of Bomb is not really a winnable war. The Empire will never beat these mud freaks into submission, well, not at least with conventional war methods. Any ground that the Empire will win today will be lost in a few weeks time and then probably retaken again. It's okay to fight for your fellow troopers, but you have to be realistic. This entire battle is pointless. And it's not like you're defending your family or home planet from the Yu Vong or something. So pick your battles carefully and choose to survive. I hope all of you troopers watching out there have learned something from our video today about the Battle of Bin Bomb and also what you should or should not do when you're taking a part in trench warfare. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our How to Survive series. Also, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.